Can the answers to all your financial questions really be written on one index card? Financial advice should be simple and easy to understand. If it's overly complicated, it's typically not the best advice. Over a decade ago, Professor Harold Pollack attempted to prove this claim. He jotted down all the rules of personal finance on a single index card. The card went viral, and he went on to write a book about it. I have no affiliation, but I'll provide a link in the description. Welcome back to Empower and Thrive. Today, we're exploring a fascinating concept, index card finance. Can the answers to all your financial questions really be written on one index card? Let's dive in and find out. Rule number one, max out your 401k contribution. Think of your 401k as a powerful financial engine. These retirement accounts are essential for building a secure financial future. Not only do they help lower your taxable income, but they also provide a robust platform for growing your investments. If your employer offers a 401k match, it's like getting free money. Don't leave that on the table. Make sure you contribute enough to get the full match. It's one of the best deals in personal finance. Pair this with IRAs and 529 plans to supercharge your savings and maximize your investment returns. Remember, the earlier you start, the more time your money has to grow. So, fuel up your financial engine and watch your future wealth take off. Rule number two, by Well Diversified, inexpensive index funds and ETFs. In the book, Pollock mentions target year funds, but personally, I'm a huge fan of index funds. They offer any long-term investor a simple, reliable path to wealth. I prefer broad index funds such as those based on the S&P 500 or NASDAQ, especially if you are just getting started. They are a very quick and easy way to invest, spreading out your risk exposure and keeping your fees low, typically less than 1% in fees. I avoid target date funds, which often come with higher fees, many in the 5% range, which can quickly eat away at your gains. Do your due diligence and find what works best for your situation. Rule number three, never buy or sell individual stocks. Most investors should stick to simple things like mutual funds, preferably index funds. But if you do decide to invest in individual stocks, limit your exposure. Don't put more than 5% of your investment portfolio into individual stocks and preferably avoid them altogether. Try to avoid the urge to buy and sell frequently as that racks up fees and eats away at your gains. Rule number four, save 10 to 20% of your income. This rule is crucial. Without saving, there can be no investing or wealth creation. Of course, putting this rule into effect is easier said than done. Saving requires earning more than enough to cover your expenses and maintaining the discipline to live below your means. Even if you can't save 10 or 20% right now, make that your long-term goal and save as much as you can today. Rule number five, pay your credit card balance in full every month. It's almost impossible to get ahead when paying massive credit card interest and too many get sucked in due to a lack of foresight. Life sometimes gets in the way of living by the book, but do your best. Work towards paying off existing debt, but as soon as the debt is reduced, make sure you pay your balances in full each month. Don't start building up debt again once your existing debt is paid off. Rule number six, maximize tax advantage savings vehicles like Roth IRAs, SEPs, and 529 accounts. These accounts offer great tax benefits and can help you grow your savings more efficiently. A Roth IRA allows your investments to grow tax-free and you won't pay taxes on withdrawals in retirement. SCPs are great for self-employed individuals, offering higher contribution limits than traditional IRAs. 529 accounts are designed for education savings, allowing your investments to grow tax-free if used for qualified educational expenses. Taking full advantage of these accounts can significantly enhance your financial future. Rule number seven, pay attention to fees. Avoid actively managed funds. 
Actively managed funds often come with higher fees, which can eat into your investment returns. These funds require a fund manager who tries to outperform the market, leading to higher costs. Instead, stick to low-cost index funds and ETFs, which typically have fees of less than 1%. Over time, the money saved on fees can significantly boost your returns. Remember, even a 1% difference in fees can have a massive impact on your investment's growth over decades. Rule number eight, make your financial advisor commit to the fiduciary standard. From a legal perspective, financial advisors are advisors with a much lower obligation to look out for their clients' interests compared to fiduciary advisors. It can be challenging to find a fiduciary. I personally use a financial advisor, not a fiduciary, but I use one who is salary-based and doesn't have the incentive to upsell, as they aren't paid on commission. Whichever way you go, try to find a reasonably priced fiduciary or advisor at a reputable firm that you trust. The last rule is rule number nine, promote social insurance programs to help people when things go wrong. This essentially means being a good citizen. Don't try to avoid paying into social security or your fair share of taxes. While no one likes paying into these programs, it's essential to ensure that programs like Social Security will be around when you need them. This one was the most controversial rule of the index card. It's not a horrible idea by any means, but do with it what you will. That's it for today. Remember, financial advice doesn't have to be complicated. By following these simple rules, you can take control of your financial future. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, keep thriving.